Hi everyone and welcome back to the Oracle DataGuard course. In this lecture, I will talk about client connectivity in Oracle DataGuard environment. I divided this subject into two lecture parts. In the first part, I will explain the concepts of this subject. And in the second part, I will talk about the practical side of the subject, which is how to implement the client failover in a data guard configuration. In this lecture, you will learn how to describe the following. The meaning of a client or application failover. The categories of the service failure that you might face in a data center. The challenges faced by a client failover. The options to implement the client failover and how to implement the client failover. DataGuard takes care of switching over or failing over a production database to a standby database. But after a database is switched over or failed over to a standby database, you have to decide about how the application sessions will be directed to the standby database or the secondary site. I will discuss this subject in this lecture and in the incoming lecture as well. Failure that could happen to systems can be divided into two categories. Complete site failure and partial site failure. As its name implies, the complete site failure is when the whole service site becomes unavailable. This could be as a result of a disaster or even a long-term connection issue to the site. In this case, both the primary application and database systems become unavailable. The second failure category is the partial site failure. This failure category is when the primary database becomes unavailable, but the application servers are still in operation. In the next slide, I will talk in more details about those categories. For a DR solution against the complete site failure, system architects use some kind of a traffic manager. This component controls the connection requests from the clients. In this model, you would have a standby site that is a replica of the primary site. It has the same components and servers, but in a different location. And as you know, the databases are replicated using DataGuard. If the primary site totally becomes unavailable, the traffic manager will automatically redirect the client connections to the new site. By the partial site failure, we mean the failure has occurred only in the database system, not in the whole site. For such a case, you would have a standby database in the same site. If the primary database fails, the application server should direct the client connections to the standby database. This is where your application failover plan plays its role. You should decide and configure how the application server should fail over to the new primary database. And this is what I am going to cover in this lecture. When you plan for application failover, what are the problems that you need to solve? One challenge that you need to plan for is the TCP timeouts. If a host is completely down or the network to the host is unavailable, the client which wants to connect to this host will wait for the TCP timeout. If the client host has a TCP timeout of five minutes, it could wait for up to 15 minutes before the connection times out. The same issue applies when a client wants to connect to a primary database that is not available. The second major issue that you have to plan is how the client connections 
should connect to the new primary database. Should this be done manually or automatically? You need to understand the requirements for each option. If you want the client sessions to fail over automatically, should this happen only to the new connections or also the current sessions? Some application may require the current sessions to continue without interruption if the current primary database fails over. As you will learn from this lecture, there is a plenty of Oracle technologies that you should use to implement the solution to those challenges. And the solution always depends on the application type. Beside those problems, you have to protect your system from falling into split brain condition. You need to prevent the new client connections from connecting to the old primary database. We already covered resolving this issue in FSFO lecture. Regarding the other issues, I will talk about the available options to solve them in this lecture. When you plan for application failover, in high level, you have one of three solution options. The first option is to do the whole procedure manually. When you are reported about the production database failure, you, as a DBA, manually fail over to the best standby database, configure the application servers to connect to the new primary database, and restart the application servers. This procedure is usually simple. In the application server side, you just open a file or two, change the connection setting to the new database system, and you may need to restart some services. And that's it. Of course, some business applications don't accept this option because it includes a lot of delay. The users should wait for the manual procedure to finish and this is not accepted by some application and an automatic procedure is required. You are already aware about automating the database failover. You use FSFO to do it. But what about application failover? To decide about which solution to use to automate the application failover, you need to figure out one thing about your application. Does it support FAN or not? But what is FAN in first place? FAN stands for Fast Application Notification. It aims at quickly notifying the application whenever a resource or component becomes unavailable. Generally speaking, this technology supports Oracle GDBC thick and thin clients and also it supports OCI applications. Now back to our main question, how can I automate the application failover? If your application doesn't support FAN, you can use DNS configuration to fail over the application. This is usually done in cooperation with a system and network engineers. They can assist you to use a load balancer solution, either software or hardware solution, to make the application automatically connect to the new primary database without having to perform anything manual in the application side. If your application does support FAN, the application will get notified about the failover, and it can be configured so that it will automatically reconnect to the new primary database. If the application is already configured to use FAN, the setup should be simple and easy. If the application isn't configured to use FAN, you need usually to work with the application administrator. The application administrator or developer will work with you on making the FAN configuration on the application server. When an application fails over, it should take care of two types of failing over. It should make sure that the new client connections will be automatically directed to the new primary database. This is called connect time failover. 
it also can be configured to transfer the current client sessions to the new primary database without interrupting the client sessions. This is called current session failover. In conclusion, you have three options for client failover. One, total manual application failover. Two, database automatic failover and application failover done by a third party component like a load balancer. Three, database automatic failover and application automatic failover done by fan configuration. If an application supports fan, and the FSFO is configured for the automatic database failover. How does the automatic application failover work? In such case, the application connects to the database through a database service. This can easily be done in Oracle database. If the primary database fails, the database service will automatically relocate to the standby database and the broker will send a fan notification to the application about the service failure. The application in response will transfer the existing client connections to the service in the new primary database. Also, the new client connections will be directed to the new primary database. The client sessions will not be disconnected by the primary database failure. To summarize how the fan-based application failover works, the database service will be relocated to the new primary database, the broker notifies the client about the failure, new connections go to the new primary database, and the client connections will be directed to the new primary database. In order to use this application failover mechanism, you have to do the following. Create database service, configure fast start failover, register your database in Oracle Restart if your database is a single instance database. And finally, make the client configuration. The required configuration depends on client type. I will talk about this in the incoming slide. Following are the application types that can support FAN. OCI clients, GDBC thick and thin clients. This include Java application server like Oracle WebLogic and applications developed by ODB.net. This slide is showing you how to configure the client application so that the current sessions are automatically filled over to the new primary database without losing their current connections. For OCI clients, you need to use the Transparent Application Failover, or TAF. When the application is built up, you need to enable the OCI events and OCI threaded mode and link the application with the threads library. I will talk in the next lecture about how to practically configure TAF for OCI clients. For JDBC clients, you use the Fast Connection Failover or FCF. In this case, don't enable the TAF in the database service. For ODB.NET applications, you configure the NET services the same way you configure it for OCI applications. You also do further configuration. I'm not going to cover it all here. But in next lecture, I will show you a reference with proper further details about the required configuration for this type of applications. In this lecture, I have talked about the fundamentals of configuring client failover in DataGuard environment. In conclusion, an application can be configured so that it fails over the new connections to the new primary database as well as the current connection sessions. The type of configuration that you should make depends mainly on the type of applications that you have. In this lecture, you should have learned how to describe the following. The meaning of a client or application failover, the categories of the service failure 
that you might face in a data center, the challenges faced by a client failover, the options to implement the client failover, and how to implement the client failover. In the next lecture, we will see the practical side of a client failover. Thanks for staying with me. See you in the next lecture.